This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar or by becoming one of our sponsors. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. This is episode number 46. Now, today we're going to be talking about a plugin for SketchUp, but not a plugin in the usual sense of the word. We've gotten used to plugins like uh, IDX Renditioner that we covered a few weeks ago, uh, and that type of plugin has an installer, right? So there's a small application that actually installs all the files that allow you to use the plugin. Fairly complex. We're going to be talking about a much simpler type of plugin called a Ruby script. Now, a Ruby script, for those of you who are more technical minded, uh, a Ruby script is basically just a text document that's written in such a way that SketchUp can understand it and use the text in that document to do something in a model. Draw a line, modify a shape, whatever. A Ruby script is just one file, and you actually install it yourself by putting it in a specific folder that SketchUp sets up for you. It's not as simple as just clicking the install button, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through this and we'll learn how to do it. Now, there are a ton of Ruby scripts out there. I'm going to be showing you one that SketchUp actually has on their website called the Bezier Curve Tool. Now, I've gotten a couple requests for this uh, tool to show people how to use this. A Bezier Curve, for those of you who don't know, is basically... Uh, a very, essentially a very fancy curve. Like, you know how we have the arc tool. A Bezier curve allows you to do curved lines in SketchUp that are a bit more complex, and you have a little bit more control over them. It's a pretty useful tool, particularly when you're doing things that like aren't like a room with very hard, hard lines and right angles, something where you want a little bit more of a curve to it. It's very, very cool stuff. Let's take a look at it. So what I've done here is I've pulled up the SketchUp website, which, for those of you who don't know, is just sketchup.google.com, or sketchup.com works just as well. And this is their home page. Now, what we're going to do, because we want to download a Ruby script that they have featured, is we're going to go to the Downloads section in the sidebar here. So let's click on Downloads. And by default, it gives you a page where you can download the latest version of SketchUp. Well, we already have SketchUp installed here, so we're, we don't want this. We're going to skip this. But you see that we've got a new category under the downloads in the sidebar, we have a new types. We have viewer, uh, plugins, and Ruby scripts. Plugins are things like IDX Renditioner that are more complex. They have an installer, right? But Ruby scripts have their own category on the website. So let's go ahead and click on Ruby scripts. And this is a really great page if you want to toy around with Ruby scripts. Up at the top here, they have uh, information on what a Ruby script is and even how you can make your own if you want to delve into that, that's pretty complex. That is not, uh, that, that, that has nothing to do with 3D modeling. That's essentially programming plugins for SketchUp, which is pretty cool. And they also have a section here on installing Ruby scripts. Now I'm going to show you how to do it on a Mac. They have instructions here for the PC as well. Uh, if you get lost, you don't know, quite know how to install the Ruby script, just go to this page on their website and they have all the information you could possibly need. But it's pretty simple stuff. And then they have how to use Ruby scripts. We're going to go through that today. And then we have sample Ruby scripts. These are Ruby scripts that SketchUp themselves have uh, written and are featured on their website. And there are a lot of really cool things here. We have uh, things like a rotated rectangle. We have different shapes. But for today, we're just going to focus on one, and that is called the Bezier tool. It's spelled Bezier, but it's pronounced Bezier. It's very fancy. So let's go ahead and click Download. Bezier.rb. .rb is the extension for Ruby script, RB Ruby. So let's download that. And it downloads very quickly because it's just a text file. And let's pull up our downloads folder here. And you can see if I uh, open this up, you can see that this is what it looks like on the inside. Pretty complex. Fortunately, we don't need to know anything about this. All we care about is that there's a file here and we need to get it in the correct spot on our hard drive. Now, if we look at the page on Google's website where they talk about installing Ruby scripts, if you're on a Windows computer, you're going to go to your C drive, and then you're going to look for a folder called Program Files, Google, Google SketchUp 8. Uh, the number might change depending on what version you have installed. Could be 8, could be 7, could be 6. If you're in the future, it could be 9. Uh, and then we're going to go inside that, and there's a folder inside there called Plugins. And on the Mac, it's pretty similar. You go to the root level of your hard drive, 
library, application support, Google SketchUp, whatever version number you have, SketchUp, and plugins. So let's go ahead and pop that open here. I'm just going to make a new window here. And we'll go to the root level of our hard drive, Macintosh HD. Go to library and application support. And there we go. I have uh, version 7 installed here. So my folder is called Google SketchUp 7. Folder called SketchUp. And here we go. So this, you can see, has a bunch of different folders you might recognize. Things like there's a plugins folder. That's what we're looking for. But we also have components and materials, styles and tools. A lot of cool stuff for SketchUp is stored here. You don't want to mess with any of this stuff, but we do want to go into the plugins folder here. And you can see here we've already got several plugins installed. You can see this is actually where the IDX renditioner stuff is installed. We have the 3D connection stuff installed here. And some of them are actually our Ruby scripts, which is pretty interesting. But what we want to do is we want to take the Bezier.rb Ruby script that we downloaded, drag it from our downloads folder and into the plugins folder. And there it goes. Now you do want to do this while SketchUp is closed down because you're going to have to restart SketchUp once you drag this into the folder anyway. SketchUp only scans for new plugins when you first launch it. So you want to make sure that SketchUp is closed down when you copy this in. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen until you restart it anyway. Now let's go ahead and pull up our SketchUp project here. And I've just made uh, a very simple, I've just basically started a brand new project. You can see we have a the guy, little guy right here. Uh, we don't really need him, but I'm going to keep him in there just for a scale reference. It's kind of nice. That way you're not just in this infinite world. You don't know how big anything is. You know that this guy is a standard height for a guy. So let's go right up to the draw menu here. And you see down here we have a new one called Bezier Curves. Pretty cool stuff. Go ahead and click on Bezier Curves. And now we can start drawing. Now, with the Bezier Curve tool, like I said, it's very similar to the Arc tool. In fact, let me show you the Arc tool real quick, just to refresh your memory. With the Arc tool, you choose a point to start the arc. And at first, it looks like the Line tool. You stretch it over another direction. You click again. That's the end point of the arc. But now, you can shift it like this. Make it bulge out like that if you want. Really great for arch doorways or something like that. But there's a problem here because we don't have very much control. We can only make this kind of a slice of a circle almost. We can't have more than one point of change here. So like, for example, we can't, with a single click with, with the arc tool, we can't make an S shape. We can only make this kind of a single curve shape. Now that's fine, but the Bezier Curve tool gives us a lot more options. So let's go ahead and switch to the Bezier Curve tool. And we'll click once. And at first, it looks like it's very similar to the arc tool. You pick a starting point, and you pick an end point. We'll start over here. But now, you can see that something a little bit different is happening. First of all, we're not locked to adjusting a point at the very center of that arc. You can see we could have it shifted over to the left like this, or over to the right, shift where the hump in the arc is. Or we could have it be standard like this. And you'll also notice that we've got a couple extra lines. You see those uh, two straight lines that are kind of forming almost like a, like a roof over this arc. You'll notice that one of them is darker than the other. That darker one represents the line that you're editing. All right. So you'll notice that as I move my cursor around, that line is the one that is affecting the shape of the arc. All right. So if I were to click over here, for example, click once, you can see now the dark line has shifted over to the other side, and we've actually got another point here. And we can now shift this back over this way, or up here, or down like this. And you can see we, we've just made so, uh, an arc that kind of doubles back on itself. That's something you can't do with the arc tool. So you can just kind of toy around with this. And now you see what we're doing is we're changing the curve from the other side. If you haven't worked with Bezier curves before, this can be a little bit weird. If you have with something like, uh, uh, Photoshop or Illustrator or some, an application like that. This should be fairly familiar to you. Uh, but if not, just kind of toy around with it. And you'll, it's pretty intuitive. And then we click once, and you can see now we've got this very cool, very interesting curve. And these curves can be uh, in two dimensions. They can be in three dimensions. Now let's talk about another uh, element of customization the Bezier Curve tool has. If I switch back to the Bezier Curve tool, you notice that down in our dimensions box, we have 
something that says degree, and it says three. The number of degrees that you have it basically represents the number of points of customization the curve you're about to draw will have. So for example, if I have three degrees set, which is the default, and I click once here and once here, I have this here and I have this uh, over here, let's say. You'll notice that I have three of those straight lines kind of uh, connecting around my uh, curve there. That means that there are three points of customization. But if I were to crank this up to four, let's say, and you want to do this before you start drawing your curve. Let's say I were to crank it up to four degrees. Same thing, click once, click twice, and now I can go up like this, like that, over here. But instead of me being done then, I then have another point of customization after my second. Even though it seems like you really only have two points of customization when it says you have three and you have three points of customization when you have four, that part's a little bit tricky. You just kind of have to work your, work your mind around that one. But uh, you can make some pretty complex things here. And I also want to point out that, let's say I were to make something really wacky here, up like this and over like this and down like that. You can see that before I click, the, shape, this, the curve is looking pretty rough, right? You can see the individual line segments. It's not a very smooth curve, it looks like a bunch of straight lines arranged to look like a curve, which is what everything in SketchUp is. But if, it's, if a big curve like this isn't made up of enough line segments, it looks really choppy. Now, in the case of the arc tool or the circle tool, you set the number of line segments each arc or curve or circle will have before you even start drawing it. With the Bezier curve tool, it actually figures that out for you after you click it. And it does it for you. You don't have any control over that. So you see, it looks very rough. Once I click to finalize my shape, it smooths it all out. And it does a pretty good job of it. Uh, so you can see if I were to, let's say, select this and explode the curve, you can see the individual line segments. I'll zoom in. You can see the individual line segments that make up the curve. But there are way more than there were before I clicked. Again, you don't have any customization over this, which can be a little bit of a pain if you're trying to do something re really detailed or something like that. But it's still a pretty cool tool. And the fact that it does that for you automatically, just keep that in mind. It's, it takes a little bit of getting used to because it's different than the rest of the tools in SketchUp. But you, using this, you can make some pretty, pretty interesting shapes. Now, until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. I'll have the show notes for this episode and a link to where you can get the Bezier Curve tool download for yourself. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, you can send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, guys, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.